Welcome to our discussion of week two of the Courageous Joy Bible Study. We're thrilled to gather with you to talk about joy in the Lord. It's a phrase we might hear often in church, but what does it really mean for us today? So what stood out to me this week was the idea of God's love being the foundation of our joy mm -hmm. and how we have a lot of things that make us happy or things that are you know, short time spans, but that real, true, deep joy comes from God. Yeah. So for you guys, as you studied, how did you, what did you find out about God's love being the foundation of your joy? So it was the passage in John 15 that we looked at this week that really got me thinking. Mm -hmm. um, so starting in verse nine, it says, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. So when I hear that word obey, I don't automatically think joy. <laughs> no, like obedience can feel painful and yeah, stretching. Um, and yet to think about the fact that here Jesus is saying like that when we obey, we experience God's love mm -hmm. and he wants us to do that so that we may find his joy. And so- It will end up good. Right, it'll yeah. end up good. And so yeah. I'm like, oh, like, I don't wanna see obedience as this painful thing. I wanna see it as a reflection of God's love that leads to joy. Mm. That's different. Yeah, that's really good. I have this one quote that was really meaningful to me. It says, God's great love for us meets us in the middle of our grief and hardships. And I talked about this a little bit last week as well, mm -hmm. but there's this idea for me that joy and pain are often dancing together. They, mm -hmm. they coexist sometimes in the same day, the same hour, the same moment. Yeah. And God invites us into that in a way that's different from the happiness mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. talked about before, because happiness it kind of makes you feel like you always have to be upbeat. But when I recognize that joy and grief exist together, mm -hmm. then again, I can be more authentic. Gives you permission to look at it differently. Yeah. I am um, Becky keyed into some of the same verses as you, especially verse 10, um, which, you know, said when he said, I will remain in God's love by mm -hmm. being obedient. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm a person that avoids pain at all costs. That is just <laughs> kind of my MO is to be that way. Yep. And so even without the absence of pain and problems, I still can find joy in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Another aspect of joy and obedience that we explored this week was in day two. And Mary Carver tells a story, uh, if you remember, about being in church mm -hmm. and uh, feeling compelled to raise her hands, but it also felt outside of her comfort zone. And, you know, I was thinking about how there's no right or wrong way to worship. Um, and yet God does want us to freely express our joy with mm -hmm. him. And so I'd love to hear, how does it require courage for you to worship God and enter into that joy with him? This week, we also talked about that story where the woman came and washed Jesus' feet with her hair. Mm -hmm. And it's one of my favorite stories. And there's something actually that happened to me when I was in my 20s. I was at a retreat and I remember that the speaker actually started reading that passage and he hadn't even started giving his message or preaching at all. But just hearing that passage just touched me so deeply. And I felt like I don't know how it happened, but I ended up on my knees, just that mess of tears and hair mm -hmm. and very convicted of some things that were going on in my life that I wasn't proud of. And at the same time, that invitation to worship the mm -hmm. Lord. And so what I love is that this woman actually is very courageous. Yeah, she she is. is lavishly loving the Lord. She's coming to him in the midst of her sin. Mm -hmm. And she is doing it in front of a lot of other people. Yeah. And so just that little experience for myself made me kind of understand why that was courageous for her to do that. Yeah, without worrying about what anybody thought. Yeah. She was just in the moment. When I read Mary's story and she talked about worshiping like a child, I mm -hmm. thought, gosh, when I was a kid, I could do that. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't care what anybody thought. I just did what I wanted, which might not have always been good, but I certainly didn't think about what other people were thinking. And yeah. what if I could worship like that as a grown up, mm -hmm. as an adult? What if I could um, just be open and authentic? And how much closer could I get to God if 
that was the way I handled it. Yeah. And I love that in both of those stories, it reminds us that it's about Jesus. Right. <laughs> like <laughs> it's not about us. It's not about who's watching, but just that genuine expression mm -hmm. of, of praise and worship. Yeah. Um, so I love that. There's a quote on page 60 that really stuck out to me. It says, Worshiping God with courageous joy simply means responding to God in the way he created you to be in relationship with him. And so for some, that means raising hands in praise. For others, that means in that moment, just bowing down on your knees. I think about I'm, I'm created, to, I feel closest with God when I'm in nature. And so when I, you know, am seeing the breeze in the trees and listening to the sound of a, of a running brook, I feel that closest to God. And so I, I love that idea of like, God, who did you create me to be and how can I enter into that with you? So what are some of the things that you have prioritized over God? I know this is a hard question, but you know, sometimes we make idols out of things that we shouldn't be. And I'm also wondering what helps you keep focused on God? Well, that's not a hard question for me at all. That's a really easy one. Um, I'm a very, I like to be busy. You know, I'm very much a get things done girl. And I just mm -hmm. make a plan, make a list, check things off. That and is true. That is how you are. Yes. And I feel really good about that. But when I can't even find 20 minutes, in 24 hours to spend some time, some focused time with God, like yeah. something is clearly out of whack. Yeah. So what I've done to fix that, and I'm, I mean, I fail all the time, but what I've done to fix that is the same thing. Basically mm -hmm. I make a plan, I make a list and I just make sure that that time with God is at mm -hmm. the top of the list mm -hmm. as opposed to the bottom. And what gets scheduled is usually what gets done. So that's really yeah. good. You know, in thinking about what you said, how we can turn things into idols, it's really easy to take something good and misplace it as a priority, even something that could be God given. Mm -hmm. And so I think about this in my life with social media. Um, I love it. It can be a tool for connecting with others. Um, I use it for encouraging others in the word, but sometimes that can end up taking way too much of a place in and my not life be good. and not, and be, not good. be good. <laughs> and so it helps me to ask the question, what does my heart really long for? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes I can go to Instagram and I just am not mind numbingly scrolling because I'm sad or I'm bored or I'm frustrated or lonely. And so if I ask that question, what is my heart really longing for? Guess what? It's going to always turn me back to God. Right. So I will never regret spending time in prayer or his word. And I have to remember that. Well, this question actually really did challenge me. And I feel like it's a daily tightrope walk. Mm -hmm. I can be going and moving in God's purpose. And then I can start to lean a little bit to one side or the other. And what I mean by that is that I love to lead and I love to serve. And I can be in the midst of doing those things that I feel like God has called me to. But then suddenly my day is full. I have this huge to-do list and mm -hmm. I have kind of pushed out that time, like you were talking about, mm -hmm. that I should be just abiding with the Lord and yeah. being with him. And I'm so caught up in the doing of the good things that he's mm -hmm. called me to, that things get out of balance. As we wrap up our discussion this week of joy in the Lord, I would love to hear from both of you, what part of God's character brings you the most joy? Hmm. That's a good thing to think about. I think the fact that God is my provider brings me joy. And I've tried to be thinking more about him as the giver and not just the gifts. Go because ahead. it's really easy for me to, you know, even small ways, I love counting gifts, which is a good thing, you know, whether it's like leftovers so I don't have to cook dinner or a timely text from a friend. Mm -hmm. Like I see that those are gifts from God, um, you know, a job that I love, a supportive husband, but I don't want to just be thankful for the gifts. I want to realize and retrain my focus to be like, God, you are my provider. You are the giver. Um, and it really does bring joy when I think about, wow, like that is who he is and he delights in me enough to give those things. That's good. I've been reading through the Psalms and I love how David does this. He calls out the character of God. Mm -hmm. And so one of the words for God that just always touches my heart is, faithful, that he is faithful. And I think about how he has been faithful to me through hard times, through good times, through challenges within our family, mm -hmm. through things that have been difficult with friends. And that faithfulness is something I keep returning to as a comfort. Faithful resonates with me a lot too. I felt the same way. It's this idea that God will never leave me, mm -hmm. that he will never leave me, um, that he planned out my life before he even created me. And my job is just to find that path he wants me on and to yeah. just keep walking forward. Yeah. 
Friends, I wish I could just reach through the screen, put my hands on your shoulders, look into your eyes, and tell you that God loves you. He really, really loves you. Let that truth wash over you. Let it fill you with joy. Let God's love lead you to worship and obey Him today. Let's keep digging into His truth and letting it transform you. Keep walking in His love. Remember, we are women of courageous joy because we are in Christ.